Hey there team, and welcome to another installment uh, of these educational Loom videos. Um, this is the fourth uh, session focusing on the Business 101 cycle. Um, the last couple of sessions we've been particularly focused on uh, the way to utilize your assets more efficiently uh, in order to generate uh, greater profits. Uh, and that's we've focused both from uh, the PL side. So we looked at the seven ways to grow your business. Uh, and then we looked at sort of the, the start of the cash conversion cycle. Uh, so focusing around work in progress uh, and how the faster we can we can do the work and, and get the work invoiced, obviously the faster that cash is going to come into the business. So if you haven't had a chance to see those um, earlier videos, feel free. I've I've put the a link to the most recent one uh, in the comments section of this video, uh, and then each of those videos has a link to the prior one, so uh, you can track your way back that way. Uh, I would suggest having a look at those before um, continuing with this one. All right, so this week we are moving on to the cash uh, side of the business 101 cycle. So essentially, how we can uh, generate or, or sorry turn our profits into cash faster um, as we know cash is king uh, it's the lifeblood of the business uh, but it's often forgotten about and, and people don't uh, put enough emphasis on on their cash so um, what we're going to do is we're just going to take a quick look at the cash conversion cycle the second part so this is essentially around your age receivables um, so how long it takes you uh, to collect uh, money from your clients from the day that you invoice them so in particular we're going to focus on the seven causes of poor cash flow um, these are the things that will hinder your ability uh, essentially to invest back into your business or uh, take money out of the business uh, by way of drawings um, and essentially lead to um, significant problems for you in the business. So there's seven of them. Let's go through them. Inadequate accounts receivable process, i.e. we're just not collecting our uh, revenue fast enough um, or we don't have good control or processes around um, yeah, collection of, of, of those receivables. So the second one is underutilized accounts payable process. Um, so this is around, you know, could we be, could we be um, working with our suppliers to create arrangements which allow us to hold on to our cash longer um, and, and therefore allow us to better maintain our cash conversion cycle, uh, reduce that down and therefore put less burden on on the business um, thirdly is there an inefficient inventory process so last week we looked at um, at the work in progress particularly for a service industry but the same thing applies for a um, a, 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 a business that holds inventory how quickly are you able to turn that inventory into cash and then the fourth one uh, is in an appropriate debt or capital structure. So um, it can go both ways. A business might have too much debt, um, in which case, you know, obviously the interest and principal payments are, are hindering your ability um, to grow the business. Uh, or it could be the other side where you've got too much of um, too much equity tied up in the business. Um, and you don't, you're not able, to, so you need to utilize debt to be able to, to, to free up some of that cash. Um, so it can go both ways. And then the, the next three are more focused around the profit and loss side of things, which we've already talked about, but you know, are our overheads too high? Um, are our gross profit margins too low? Uh, or are we just not selling enough? So. I'm going to take a quick look again at the 
gap value calculator, sorry about that, the gap value calculator, uh, which we've been focusing on uh, over the last few sessions. Um, and in particular, we're just going to focus around the um, cash flow. So the idea being that um, in this particular business, and if we just take a quick look, um, again, generic numbers, um, these have been uh, th this is not a real business, it's just a, a an example. Um, so in this case, uh, the current debtor days for this business are 67. So essentially it's taking 67 days from the day that they send the invoice to the customer to the cash arriving into their bank account. Now, I would consider that to be quite significant. Um, and as you can see, if we can reduce that number, even just by 10 days, the cash freed up is $34,000. So suddenly you've got $34,000 more in your bank account as a result of you focusing on bringing your debtor days down. We looked at um, inventory and whip days last week, so I'm not gonna focus on that. And payable days, 50 days to pay your suppliers. It seems to be a little bit high. That might be a result of the fact that your debtor days are so high um, that you're struggling to be able to pay your your your, um, your suppliers on time. And that's gonna lead to um, you know difficult conversations with those suppliers, possibly um, penalties uh, and you know, a risk of, of them putting you into liquidation if things get really bad. So we probably actually want to reduce those down, let's say to 40 days. Okay, so even if we reduce the um, payable days by as much as we're able to reduce the debtor days, you can see there's still a benefit of $15,000 on your cash. So that just shows you how those small incremental changes uh, to your cash conversion cycle can have such a big impact on your business. So if you want to talk about how um, how this if this uh, cash conversion cycle impacts your own business um, and possibly how your cash could be improved through some of these um, so some tools around um, reducing these um, payable uh, debtor days or payable days. Get, get in touch with me uh, and we can have a conversation. Thanks. See you soon.